Hey, we are live. Hey, it's it's me, Jan. I uh, for uh, you folks who are listening in, I just showed off my Brazil 2010 Soccer Champ T-shirt because that's what we are uh, doing today in the back, right there, the Norwegian flag. If you didn't know, my wife is from Brazil, and I am from Norway originally. Been in LA now for 30 plus years, and uh, what a journey. And we're still, still not done. We're still going. We're still going here. But today, we're not going to talk about me. We're going to talk about you, how we can help you, how we can serve you, how I can add some value to your life here. And... Um, if you are again watching this on YouTube, thank you. If you are watching live, hey, more more power to you. And if you are on my broadcast, as in my podcast rather, then an ultimate thank you for that. Um, it's an exciting journey with all this tech stuff these days. You know, you have a lot of potential for distribution of your content, of your value add, and this is my way of doing it. And so uh, today. We're going to talk about funnels, and you hear this a lot in the marketing realm, in the business realm, certainly for online, you know, but uh, it's interesting, that word funnel, right? We know what it means. We know what it looks like. But really, what this is in a fancy term is the customer journey, you know, the touch points along the way. What are they doing? How are they navigating? How are they using your uh, total sales experience, if you will, your marketing and sales experience. It's all of it, right? So, um, you know, I'm going to share uh, a webinar style series of funnels today. Uh, these are various frameworks that we use and uh, actually deployed recently for a large client in the health industry, in the health niche. Uh, but you can use this for so many types of businesses today and certainly the ones where you are in the professional services capacity. So, if you're a coach, consultant, author, speaker, et cetera, you have products, information, products that you want to sell, et cetera, then uh, this is a great way to go uh, using a, a webinar style funnel with, uh, you can use official sort of webinar software like Stealth Seminar or uh, EverWebinar, and there's many out there. Uh, you know, often though, I find that a straight off VSL or just a video works just as good. Now, there's a lot of tech aspects to this, and I'm not going to get into that uh, as we start thinking about retargeting and messaging and things like that. Uh, that's for another session. What we're going to cover here, though, is the basic frameworks that you can use in the different ways in which you use these and what may make sense for you and your business. So we're going to show you kind of a more complex funnel, and then we're going to break it down into the minimal viable funnel, uh, MVF, if you will. And uh, uh, that's, that's actually an exciting opportunity as well because less work and uh, easier to test. So, um, and um, if you're uh, seeing this, you're obviously seeing chaosmap.com. That is a complete brand pitch. If you wanna go there and download more information, see our blog, and uh, welcome to set up a call there as well, where we can take you through these things and, uh, and help you with it. But um, we'll get back to that. So let me turn that guy off and we'll jump right into the framework here. And there we are. So what you're looking at here is uh, five different ways in which we talk about um, uh, funnels for webinars. And the first one is, <clears throat> before I get into that, by the way, <clears throat> pardon me, is, um, uh, you know, if, you, if you're, if uh, you by the way, you can get this download here. Uh, in fact, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this hooked up into a link in the show notes, and uh, we're gonna make this uh, available as a download for you in a PDF because that's how cool you are. You get you get all this. And um, and then you'll see what I'm talking about for, uh, for those who are not visually uh, watching this right now. But uh, essentially, right at the very top, I have some arrows across the, the screen. Um, the arrows on the left are uh, in red colored and on the right, green. And so the left side, red-ish color, targeting message. You know, this is... Uh, that uh, message to market match conversation we've had before, like who are you talking to? The psychology, demographics, technographics, all that. Uh, and then as you move through the funnel, it becomes a little, little less red, a little warmer. You know, you're doing the no like and trust deal, right? And so you get into the presentation with a call to action as you move further across the page. Uh, now you're into the maturity stage. You're really warming up your audience. 
your prospects, you're adding a lot of value, value and goodwill. And over on the right, we have elevation slash close, I call it, where you have a human to human interaction. So initially we start off with a digital presence through inbound traffic, through, uh, through ads. Uh, here I'm showing uh, Facebook uh, kind of uh, uh, ads as the resource or, or as the source rather. And then we move through to uh, landing pages, uh, the webinar itself, which is a VSL. VSL is really, really just a short-term uh, nomenclature for a video sales letter. We got the booking page, which is a calendar that uh, folks can select from. In fact, if you go to chaosmap.com forward slash book dash me, you'll see an example of that calendar. And then we have a confirmation page and that uh, gets sent over. And uh, again, some internal tech stuff here, but uh, that essentially gets a notification over to your sales team or salesperson with an S or not. And uh, that's where you also will have your own sales scripting and workflow in terms of, uh, you know, sales close and opportunity to help, you know, and not every uh, deal is going to be closed here. So, um, you know, you still have value to be given in terms of uh, observing perhaps even a referral if it's not a match at that time. But that is also another conversation for another time. So let's, uh, I have five on here and I'm gonna go through some of these a little bit quicker than others because they're a little bit of a repeat, just a slight change here as you'll see. <clears throat> but the first one is um, really what I call the webinar plus booking form only. And a booking form is essentially a calendar as I mentioned. And so, uh, what you want to do is obviously get some traffic to your page. And what I'm talking about is a specific page uh, to the big idea or the big problem that you are trying to solve. So not everything under the sun, right? A specific problem. You know, you're presenting the big idea and what you can solve and what you are good at solving. So the traffic comes in, goes to a landing page. Those should be A-B tested in terms of versions against each other. And typically, I like to st start with an aggressive A-B test. So not, you know, not grayish versions of each other, but black and white. So one version would be black and another would be white, for, uh, for lack of better uh, description on that. <clears throat> and then it goes to the webinar room, which is the VSL page. Then after they watch the webinar, there's going to be a call to action. Hey, if you'd like help with this. If you want to learn more, uh, jump on a call with us. Here's a link to the booking page, the booking confirmation page, and then over to sales. That's the first one. <clears throat> the second one here is where you actually get a little more granular. You're uh, kind of diving in, if you will, to get some more information to qualify this person. Because the first one I mentioned is quick and easy, but you'll get everything under the sun unless you do some serious screening at the top end, top of funnel, but that's typically hard to do. <clears throat> so number two here, the webinar, again, application plus booking form. So the first one was booking form only. Here we have application. So they actually have to apply. Same thing applies, the traffic, the landing page, the webinar room. But after the webinar room, there's not a call to action to book. You first have to apply. So you get the apl application form page the confirmation page and then the booking page and then the booking confirmation page. Now I put a little green arrow on here that are pointing to each other on the application confirmation and the booking calendar page because you can actually integrate a calendar widget on the same page. So once they've applied, it says, thank you for your application, select your calendar timing below, date time below, right? So you can put that on the same page. And that squeezes the number of pages down, obviously. And then back to sales closed on the right-hand side. So um, I just want to kind of take a quick break here and ask you if that makes sense. And when I say ask you, for those of you who have questions or on live, feel free to comment. I can't see it right now, but I will get back to you, I swear. So we're going to get back to the show here. <clears throat> and uh, let's hide that. So now number three is very similar to number two, which is the uh, same webinar VSL style, but now instead of application booking form, you have the booking form first and then the application form. Now this is a uh, you know somewhat contentious, but also simply answered by testing this. Should you go through the webinar and then display the application and then booking form or booking and then application form? Well, if you want more lead flow, go ahead and set up the booking first and then the application form. 
And uh, typically less quality on that. But if you want to start out that way, that could be a great way to just get some traction, especially if it's a sales team and they're like, where's my leads, dude? So then throw up the booking page first and then the application form because application form it has a little more inquisitive questions. You know, how are you doing in your business? What are your goals? You know, name, email, there's going to be a lot more uh, information, which means more friction. But it'll be less, it'll be higher quality in terms of the uh, application first and then the booking form. But this number three attempts to get the calendar booked. And then if they don't fill out the uh, application form, yes, they still will be on the, on the calendar. Yes, they still may make the call. Typically, they will often bail. So again, less quality, right? But you can close from that and you will spend a little less time through the funnel. So it's a toss up of do you want quality versus quantity but i like to test both of these scenarios so i typically start out with the booking first just to get a, a sense of the flow um but again the maturity of the business will vary here if you have a business that's already established uh, has members in your community people are already know liking and trusting you and you have a lot of ability ability to drive traffic from warm leads then that's a great way to start uh, kick off the application first, then the booking form. Number four here is still in the webinar kind of uh, context, but it's a little different in that it opens up with a guide. So you have traffic coming in and a guide like a, a download, a worksheet, you know, a quick workbook, uh, uh, you know, like the 10, 10 things you need to know about X type thing, you know, how to, um, you know, double your return in the, you know, XYZ niche business in 30 days, right? So it's basically a, a strong headline driven, you know, ebook or guide, you know, the traditional special report here kind of deal, right? So you drive traffic to that. You A-B test those pages. That goes now to the webinar room, the VSL page. So the same thing plays. You just, instead of registering for the actual event, you're giving away something free at the front end, which is that guide there. <clears throat> then it goes from the page to the booking page or the application uh, page. Again, that's something you have to test. And then it goes through uh, and through and through all the way to the confirmation page for the application or the booking form. And then over to sales closed, yes or no, over on the right-hand side, meaning your sales team will be able to, uh, to work within that, um, uh, that lead flow. Uh, the final one is number five which is what I call the minimal minimum <laughs> viable funnel. And MVF is basically changing everything to kind of be front loaded. So instead of you sort of nurturing and adding value throughout the funnels as in the last prior four that I described, this one aims to position your story, the problem, the uh, agitation of that problem and the solution, you you're giving a lot more away at the front end with a long form story based ad format. Now it's got to be compliant. Uh, Facebook is definitely uh, sort of uh, snapping down on this uh, in terms of any hypey. I mean, they shouldn't be doing this anyway, right? But uh, more words in these ads are going to get higher scrutiny if it's non compliant. So you got to read the Facebook ad policies. I uh, made a reflection on that and some links in the uh, previous podcast, actually. <clears throat> and this you can test with an image or a video ad. The combination of text there, copy, and the creatives will be important to test. But essentially, you're sharing a lot more of the insights, uh, distinctions that you uh, have inside your webinar at the front end, right? So instead of doing it throughout the funnel, you're really sharing your juiciest stuff up front and, and letting them experience that. Of course, with a video, what's really helpful uh, in the Facebook world is the ability to look at perhaps those who have watched 50% of it and retarget them with an image ad creative uh, to drive that audience further down the funnel. But again, we're not going to talk too much detail about the Facebook ad strategy. All that to say that the MVF minimal uh, minimum viable funnel, I cannot say that <laughs> ever, I think, uh, just right. Uh, so a long form uh, story based ad format straight to the application form. So basically they have to apply to get in to speak to you. 
and then you have the application confirmation page. Now the application form page would be a combination of the actual calendar and the, uh, the application itself. Now you could also alternatively rip out the booking uh, entirely if you don't have a lot of traffic through here. So when you get the application form page, your team or yourself, you just reach out directly and, uh, and set a time. Now we like the booking page because it creates order and it also creates a workflow that's easier to track. And also the entire team can understand and recognize, you know, the various touch points along the way in a little more easier fashion. <clears throat> and then on the confirmation page is thank you. We will send you further information. Now, I should also add here that there's the capability, of course, now in our day and age to, uh, you know, enter your, your name and email, name, email and phone. Well, the phone is essentially your, you ask for the mobile phone. And your note will say, thank you, we will text you with further instructions. In fact, that's what this minimal minimum viable funnel is for, is that you have the long form story based ad at the front end, it goes to the app form, and you get a thank you and the text will send you further instructions. And so that text goes straight to your mobile. And that may be a link straight to your uh, booking uh, page, or further instructions in terms of whatever you've set up for your business. So it's a very powerful um, uh, model this MBF and you should absolutely test it. So uh, I'm back on screen here briefly. I just want to uh, share with you that uh, if you need help with any of these things, uh, you can go to chaosmap.com, learn more about what we do. Uh, but also you can go to chaosmap.com forward slash book dash me, book me with a dash in there. And we'll be uh, happy to jump on with you for uh, 15, 20 minutes and uh, help you out. And, and of course, in full transparency, if there's a opportunity to work together, we can talk about that. But really, up the gate, we just want to help you, get you set out straight because we love what we do. And uh, I've been doing this for a long time. And so... I want to make sure that uh, I add the best value I can to my community and help out as much as possible. You know, ultimately, it just feels good to know that that's happening. But of course, I also know that there is business out there from this. So, um, so that's that a little mini uh, pitch for you. And uh, as we go back and look at this document, uh, I'm going to make this uh, available. We're going to PDF uh, this for you, and it's a. Uh, Basically, in summary, five different ways that you can capture your lead flow, uh, capture your traffic into a lead flow that works through uh, steps in this, uh, you know, webinar VSL style um, framework. Uh, and I really uh, hope you leverage this and use this for your own business. You may already have something like this established, but you haven't add, added tracking points. You don't know where you're spending your money throughout this funnel. Uh, as you hear me talk about a lot, uh, math and psychology is essential in this game. So if you understand your math and your conversion points along the way here, all the way back to your sales uh, team, and you have scripts and processes and systems that uh, track and behave in a manner that you can scale it, uh, well, then that's absolutely what you should do. And then the psychology of this is that you create messaging that matches the, the audience you're trying to get, but also that you are trying to position not only the big idea, uh, but that you are offering solutions along the way and that you help them solve that. And the classic dating example works every time. You don't go for the kiss uh, the first night, right? Or the first uh, time you meet somebody, uh, you really are warming up and getting to know, like, and trust this person. And it's the same here in, in marketing. Marketing is, of course, all about that and positioning and, and setting that pre-frame and, and adding value. But uh, ultimately, uh, when you move into the sales section of uh, of your workflow, uh, that's when you have really an opportunity to, you know, sort of talk about, hey, it's almost selling yourself. I mean, it sells itself at that point. So, um, so anyway, this is a another broadcast from the Digital Marketing Center here in Los Angeles with uh, the awesome, uh, you know, uh, Brazilian. <laughs> A uh, T-shirt and uh, Norwegian flag in the background. How about that? Yeah, yes, not in Norsk. In case uh, you didn't know, I I'm fluent in Norwegian and uh, teach my kids that stuff as well. And uh, yeah, they speak Portuguese and Norwegian. So we're having fun over here. And uh, again, I appreciate you joining today. If you have any questions, certainly send those off. Uh, we always like it when you uh, when you comment and share. 
And uh, anything else that you have uh, any issues with, uh, come see us over here at uh, good old chaosmap.com. All right, this is Jan signing off. Have a good one, guys. Enjoy.